Hey you, you're watching a segment of Shiftcast. If you want to see the other segments or the full episode, you can go to YouTube or you can listen to it on Spotify. Enjoy. So uh, a team that you're most excited to watch there, I'll go first, Oxygen. I mean, it's not even close. You know, obviously I'm invested. I am biased. I am signed to the team. But paid actor, some might paid say. Paid actor, some might say. Mm -hmm. But uh, they are a team that I think a lot of people are, are interested in watching because oh. there is a, a chance that Oxygen can actually take the world spot from Carmen Corp. Now, it's going to be a tough road. Uh, they have to make top two. So, you know, they're aiming very high. But I think the team, you know, with, with what we saw with Gentlemates last time, I think anything is possible as long as you have that ability. And I think they do have that ability. Maybe they're not there yet. Maybe nobody, uh, maybe very few are going to predict them, which I think is fair. But, uh, you know, there's an outside chance. So I'm excited to watch and see what they could do. Woody, can I ask you a question? Yeah. On a, on a larger scale past yeah. that, do you think there could be an issue where Oxygen make a miracle run? They, they Not a miracle run, but they, they get their top eight win yeah. and they get a big win in the top four and they're in the world championship. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there could be an issue of the team almost in a in the same way that Furia, it felt like, almost were on an adrenaline high and it just kind of dropped and they lost those four straight games to BDS after going up 2-0 and having that massive win over Moist? Do you think, think if so. they walk into the final they and they're like, we made worlds, let's go, we did yeah. it, no one thought yeah. we could do it, then they just got focused? I think that is possible. I think that's possible for Oxygen or, or, or any other team because it's just... It sounds crazy, but that semifinal match is going to feel heavier. And, mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous because it's not the grand finals. The grand finals should be the biggest thing. But when your whole season is riding on that win and your, you know, your, your chance to get to Worlds is riding on that win, I, I could definitely see that happening, especially if, um, and I assume it will be the case, whoever the opposing team is is not going to be, like they're already locked in. If it's BDS yeah. or Mates or Vitality or Furia or Falcons, mm -hmm. G2, GNG, who I think is those are most of the team the squads that we're thinking is going to make it to the finals. If one of them, they're all locked in, like they're all set. So they're not going to have that, like you said, that huge emotional roller coaster. But I want to say this too, I think a lot of it just depends on those guys' personalities, because they could just use it as as like, like you said, adrenaline's pumping and 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 they just keep rocking and rolling. So I think a lot of that comes down to the individual personalities of the team. Um, you know, if they're kind of mama mentality, job's not finished. You know, like we. Sure, we accomplished what we came here to do, but there's, you know, there's one step further we can go, and we want to do that. Um, or are they more? I mean, I don't, I don't have a, an opposing example, but are are they more along the lines of just like so grateful to have accomplished the uh, the tough, you know, the tough task of going top two? I don't know. It just depends on on what those guys have, uh, you know, as as personalities from the competitive standpoint. But like you said, it definitely that definitely is a scenario where a team could fizzle out once they get to the grand finals. You're assuming they get there, though, because you just named an entire list of teams <laughs> that you, you'd expect to make right. it that far. Right. And and they are not the favorites. It's doable. No. It's absolutely doable. But they are not the favorites to make it that far. So I have to see it before I believe it. If they're there, I, th I think if they've even made it to the semifinals, they should have all the confidence in the world to actually go through and, and make it happen. But uh, yeah, they first have to get there. It is going to be really, really tough. Yeah. Well, the team I'm looking at, I'm really excited to see. I talked about them. I said last week I thought they were the team to beat. It's Team Falcons. Because I feel like mm. there are certain teams that I feel like when you when they come into a tournament, it almost feels like this is their shot. This is the point where if they're going to get one, as a team, as a roster, not individually as players, but as a roster, it's probably going to be this one. I felt that way about FaZe at San Diego last year, where it's like, they're not going to have, like, they're an older roster. You know, there's been issues before with these players. Like, they finally have it clicking. If it if it's not going to happen now, it's probably never going to happen, right? I think Gen G was probably the same when they won the fall major in Rotterdam. Um, to me, it's not on that level, but there are so many incredible teams in the world right now that you really have to be on form for the whole weekend and really know that you have the ceiling of a land winner. And to me, Falcons just check every box. They play such an exciting style of Rocket League. You know, no more, even though it's still part of the game, that sort of low 50 meta you'd hear about from Mina teams is, is really not the case anymore. Um, they're, they're hot. They're very, very fast. They're able to adjust to mm -hmm. different play styles. Um, and they have like just brilliant individual players 
Um, they were the most fun to me team to watch last LAN, and I think that's going to continue at this point. Yeah, exactly. That's the main thing, I think, for me as well, that they were so good. Everyone knew they were good, but they really showed up in Copenhagen, so that's what makes them such an exciting team to watch mm -hmm. now. And, of course, you have all the history as well, right? Mm -hmm. with, yeah, uh, almost did with... the, what no one's ever done before, right? Is that yeah. expansion region team? Yeah, and making it to second place in in the Copper Box in, in London. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's where they've done it before, and that might be where they do it again, but the most recent winners of yeah. a LAN event are, for me, a very exciting team to watch, Gentlemates. Because it Cause feels you didn't think like... they'd be there. Well, hey. <laughs> wow, that makes what a them... switch. What a that demonic definitely... <laughs> switch up for you. Definitely makes them an exciting that. team to watch right now. <laughs> Um, defying all expectations, nah, they they were they always had a really good chance of yeah. being there and, and being good. The thing is, it seems like BDS is definitely on top of Europe right now, yeah. but maybe the European teams aren't as strong as they were in the lead up to Copenhagen, uh, as dominant, I would say. Uh, but we've seen Gentlemates be the weakest of the bunch in the first split and level up to to a really different level on LAN. So if they can do that again, I mean, I feel like there's a chance for them. There's a chance for a team like Team Falcons, but absolutely for Gentlemates too. And they're, they're going to be the defending champions, right? It's not They're not the world champions, but they're going to be the defending international champions that everyone wants to beat just because of that. Yeah. Yeah, they're the only roster, if you think about it, they're the only roster that can say they've done it, right? They're going to have the confidence... The three of them together, of course, and other other land winners. But there's only one gr like actual roster that's won anything already so far because there was so much swapping around. Well, uh, I guess Vitality, Vitality I yeah. I about that. But yeah, there it, it, that for that it's so far away. Like, I wonder, I do wonder if the mates' commitment to team ball allows them to avoid the sort of individual skill debuff that comes with land. Or it seems to come with land, um, and you know it, it begs the question. After seeing them have another like strong but not dominant split, were they just simply playing to their normal level because they have a they they're for whatever reason more adapted to the land environment, and everyone else was playing worse, right? Like to me, that's always been why. Like to me, I, I watch Seiko, and I'm like, this guy treats you know RLCS like a job. He doesn't seem to care very much about winning. I mean, he obviously cares, but like he's not emotionally invested uh, visibly the way other other players are. And I, I look at the way that maybe affects the team. Like, hey, this is just another game. This is just another best of seven that we have. We've had to play a million times in the same format. Mm. Um, so well, I think they should have the confidence, all the confidence in the world. Because they've won the last LAN, we have indeed very few teams, very few rosters who've done it, uh, apart from Fratality and Gentlemates. But they're the ones basically in control from the start if they can make that happen, right? Yeah. Cobros, it's our time. Yeah. I'm coming back. The return. Um, but on top of that, you know, there are teams we're excited to see. For like the playstyle reasons or like the narrative, but we also got to talk about teams we're excited to watch because we think they could make a little more noise than most people think. The sleeper, the legendary sleeper. There's always a sleeper team. The mates were the sleeper team of Copenhagen. A lot of people think that thought they might even miss top eight. They were a round five team. Instead, they went six zero. They beat the number one and number two seeds in Europe, and North America, and the number one seed in Mina. So for you guys, who's your sleeper team? Maybe not to win the whole thing like the mates did, but to perform. A lot better than people think they are. Pretty. Um, I think Team Secret. I think they are going to be uh, just very generally, so kind of like community wide, very generally underrated, just because there hasn't really been much of a story internationally about that squad. And I think Ninjas would have been similar. I think Crew would have been similar. It's just really been, you know. Viewing from afar and then listening and, and seeing the the you know Twitter and Reddit and everywhere else, it's really just been such a heavy focus on fury and complexity. They made the first international major, and then the whole second split almost felt like, well, can complexity hold the spot? It wasn't mm -hmm. so much about like who's going to take it. It was more about, and even when complexity was like significantly behind, 
uh, moving into that third event, it wasn't so much shining light on the other teams. It was more like, well, can complexity grab it back? Um, mm -hmm. And so I think I think Secret is going to, I think they're going to be better than a lot of us expect. I think, you know, one thing that you mentioned, Michael, talking about Falcons, um, or, or one thing that I think is pertinent to them, and, and it will be to this roster as well, I think defense has just become very, very important. Um, all these players and all these teams in this era have very potent offense. They have very potent attacking. All these players, at like one, two, and three. You know, I know that there mm -hmm. are better players. Like there's there's best players on a team, role, uh, you know, role players, whatever. But everyone is so capable. Everyone has flip reset bag. Everyone can can pull things up high. They can, uh, you know, direct fifties back to teammates. They 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 have a deep offensive bag at this point. And I think that to me, when I watch, that is what kind of separates the good from excellent is those teams, because you're going to be put on defense. You're going to be put back there with low boost. You're going to have to sustain defense for extended periods of time. Obviously, you don't want to, but it's going to happen when you're playing elite elite talent. And so one of the things that I like about Secret is they've always got that defensive rock in KV1, similar to uh, Rawas on Falcons. And it's just a player that you Daniel know well. you know for sure um, they're going to have that back line locked down. They're going to be consistent and solid. And I think that's a really, really important thing to bring to a land environment. Mm. Uh, so I, I got secret. I think yeah. they're going to be a little bit slept on by the community, and I like that uh, that defensive I, foundation. I don't know if they're if they're underrated per se, but maybe I just rate them higher than the community. I don't know. But uh, what I like about Team Secret is that they're not losing to Erased. Right. Here, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Um, I was going to say quickly, our boy friend of the show, one-time guest host of the show, Bel Air, actually pointed out on Twitter a while back that for as good as KV1 has been on defense always, I th the, the reason that Secret has looked a lot better is actually because he's added a lot of offense to his game. I got some stats for you straight from mm -hmm. Bel Air. Shout out to Bel Air. Um, the last three events, <clears throat> the final three qualifiers of the season, three of the four highest scoring performances by KV1 in his RLCS career. The, oh, the wow. biggest offensive numbers. Yeah. On top of that, he's one of only four players in Sam shooting over 27% on over three shots per game. So he's getting shots up and he's scoring. Plus, he's still got that KV1 defense. Hootie, I think if there's a player, especially that you could be looked at as like the sneaky player that comes out with their the uh their stock risen the highest among the international community that maybe doesn't watch as much, Sam. Yeah. I think you're on to something with KV1. Yeah, yeah. honestly, I don't have Team Secret making it that far, but they might just be peaking at the right time. Mm -hmm. They seem to be, you know, playing the best they have this season right now, so they might just be peaking. But I have another team who took the second seed spot from another team that we would have expected to be there, x Rule 1, and that is Twisted Minds. That is my sleeper team, because I feel like even in the first split, Twisted Minds were a team that people heavily underrated because everyone was just looking at Team Falcons and Rule 1. And now they have Ahmad, who was there in second place in the Grand Finals of London, last major it was in the copper box so now he's the one who needs to do it again grand finals is may maybe a little bit far for a team like twisted minds but i think they are a dark horse for the tournament for me personally i got team power two three last two three last tournament right there were two three had to run into G2 in that round five. We knew that wasn't doing well, but beat rule one. No one thought they were going to beat rule one. Well, some people probably, but the majority of people thought they weren't going to beat rule one. And I think they've been able to show a continued level of dominance that shows that they're taking things very seriously, that they want this top eight, right? Because you can coast, basically had worlds wrapped up by the end of the first split with how many points they had and how weird the rest of the region had been. Um... And uh, instead, no, they've continued to put their keep their foot on on the region's neck. And you know, I love me some OCE after dark, some late night OCE. It's the it's the best thing you can watch in RLCS, in my opinion, for the online portion because it's so silly. But the most boring OCE matches 
are power OC matchups because yeah, they true. whoop everybody. And you can only ask them that for for to to sort of to be able to dominate a region like that for a lot, that long. It shows a level of professionalism yeah. that Furia obviously playing a tougher region, but they struggled at times, right? Losing series that you think they should have won. Um, Falcons have shown it, and they're the, I, they, like I said, I think they're my number one team right now. So I think this is a team that you know, if if, if there's more of a weird Swiss, we had a very normal Swiss last time. There's more of a weird Swiss where the round five matchups, they end up playing a team like Secret, Twisted Mind, Space Station, OG. I wouldn't be that surprised to see them make the top eight. I really top believe. Top eight even? I'm not sure. I think they did really, really well in Copenhagen. I think that first split major is as far as they can go. I I just did the <laughs> bracket predictions. Hey, I, you know, I think these are good sleeper picks because Jens has said that he doesn't believe in either of them. So they've got to yeah. be, I yeah. mean, that's a good, I that's, that's precisely what we're looking for, isn't it? Hootie. Hootie, he is <laughs> yeah. so far asleep. He's There's Z's coming up from yeah, his I head. Mean, it is almost <laughs> 1 a.m. here. So maybe, exactly. maybe that's it. But I think I, 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 mean, I agree. I think all five again. For, I mean, really, I think all three of these squads, I, I would imagine that all of us kind of feel like top eight would be kind of exceeding expectations yeah. for these teams, you know, getting out of that Swiss stage. I, I mean, I, I look, I think Secret could pull something crazy, but I don't really think they're going to go top four or better. Uh, but I think a top eight would be surprising. And I think a lot of people would, and similar for Twisted Minds and Power, I think a lot of people would celebrate those teams making it into the bracket. Yeah, I All think right. you look at those teams and then you look at uh, SSG and OG, mm-hmm. and those are like sort of the round five right. Swiss teams you expect to go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I made the bracket earlier uh, just to see how the Swiss stage would play out with my predictions. And it would see Twisted Minds and Power meeting up in round five. Mm. And I have Twisted Minds over Power there. So that's how they go out in round five. I don't see them beating right? any you, of you the have, other round five teams. So, yeah, you you have the the, the four from Europe. You have the big, the kind of big two from NA. Yeah. And yeah. then you have the and then you have the Falcons and Furia. That's eight teams. Yeah. So it's like you have then you have this whole other group of teams, and it shows how deep these lands right. are, especially because there's not that many spots. That SSG OG Twisted Minds secret power. That's five more teams where it's like they probably all feel like they should be able to get a top eight if they perform yeah. well. And yet they have to knock out one of those eight teams to make it. Like that's not easy at all. Right. That's a very, very, especially, uh, it's just crazy. Especially because Swiss is, you know, it's pretty good at, you know, allowing the top eight in. Whereas like a, as opposed to say like a double Elin bracket where yeah. things may just line up in their favor. Yeah. I mean, yeah but you can get some that crazy note, though, I mean, they're, five like you, you just rattled off five strong squads that yeah. if any of those top eight are not on their a game they're, exactly. yeah. they're, they're definitely gonna, gonna drop it. a yeah. series so yeah. yeah i mean i look at ssg at uh da- at boston if you look at ssg at boston they played the two teams that won the last two majors in their top 12 matches they played yeah. carmine corbin up around two and they played gen g in lower round three mm. or lower round two so they didn't even get to day three and they had to play at that point yeah. the number one seeds in both regions right and it's like you know, all the format talk and the single elim stuff and all that, Swiss is actually really good at getting us the best. It, yeah. And, you know, it'll be interesting. It is, but in ground five, things can still go awry a little You're bit. right, absolutely. Because in my bracket, which is just an example, it can go a hundred million different ways. But in my example, we have a matchup in round five between just minds and power, which means that Gen G and Oxygen are playing each other. Mm-hmm. In that matchup, yep. you know, there's going to be a team that I would expect in the top eight not mm-hmm. making it there. But if you, if you toss one of those early matches, like a, yeah, like a exactly. one match, like a one match I mean, or a one one yeah. match, you're Swiss, Swiss does not eliminate. You don't even have to toss it because in my bracket, Genji only loses to Furia and BDS. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, Swiss does not eliminate like upset scenarios or or like that where they you know run into two strong teams and it's not a bad loss, but. Um... Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, let's, um, let's bounce to the next one. So this is team uh, teams that you think will or could have uh, an underperformance. Ooh, we're going to be Debbie Downer here. I'll uh, go first. Well, well, I'll go first. Why doesn't Yen start? Why doesn't Yen talk about which <laughs> okay, one we, he picked? Huh? Are we going to rip him? Are we going to get him, Michael? He's a hater. Who, who did you say was? Who was your sleeper no, pick again? Go ahead and say it with your lips, because I know you put that there because I put it there. 
I, I actually, know you did it. You're I so actually, not slick, dude. You're so not slick. <laughs> Michael, Michael, Michael. I actually <laughs> agree a on the, hater, the other teams. If we go down the list, um, spoilers no, for I know, the but next you, segment. So you were like, oh, my, you know, you know, you know, you know, you said, so much. you said, oh, I agree too much with Michael. My shit must be trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to make sure we have some content. No, I'll go through opinion. that later. I did it in, in chronological order. But yes, I have power as my team that might underperform. But what is under so what is underperforming for power? That's the thing. That's what I was conf- right. like, confused about. Yeah, I mean it is very tough to say. I, I believe people have expectations of them going round five now. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's that the least sense. I think that's the least that they should be able to do not maybe not should do but should be able to do is mm-hmm. making it to round five and then it will be hard to put them into the top eight but i feel like power has been so dominant in sure. their own region that yeah. a lot of people especially now that we've seen that they can actually kind of compete internationally as well they feel like power should be should be decent to make it to that round five to have a chance at that top eight. And I feel like last time they made it happen, but it, it was a struggle. It was a hard fought, hard fought battle. They made it happen, sure. But I can see them not getting as good of a result this time around. So that's me. Picking your sleeper team. Of course. <laughs> Stan of snakes this podcast, as I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, well, we'll I'm going to go with Furia. We'll shake hands on the next couple, I'm sure. Sure. Uh, I'm going to go with Furia. We ha- I had this uh, term that I would use at certain episodes. But I kind of dropped it, but I'm bringing it back. Silly team. Mm-hmm. Furia, the last four events, three of the last four events, to me, are showing like strong silly team symptoms. Yeah. Let me walk you through. Split one major, 3-0 on the in the Swiss, looking like the best Fury we've ever seen. Yan is back. Jufino is the South American rise. Lost is he? Is he the the most mechanical player in the world? They get dog walked by Zen and Radosan, and it doesn't even look competitive, right? And an amazing top eight. They have the lone non-competitive series. Now we go to the first regional, they clean up. I'm like, okay, Fury is back. They had a one bad series, it's whatever, they're still a top team. They won the last three regionals the same. They lose to Ninjas in Pajamas, which are a good team, but if like if you want to be considered a, you know, a team that is a serious threat to win a LAN, which I only believe there are three right now, you don't lose to uh, the third best team in South America. I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen. And then you lose to a team that hadn't made the bracket in a regional in your top format. So to me, the 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 if I look at the team that won last split, I look at I look at gentle mates, what defined them throughout their run at the major was consistency. They were able to play the same way and stay calm and 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 get it done while other teams were panicking. Furia to me has not shown me that they have this sort of mental approach to the game that they can avoid these silly results that they keep having. Because I'm watching the Falcons win every regional. I'm watching G2 win four regionals in North America. I'm watching BDS win back-to-back regionals in Europe, which is not easy. It's, all, I would say, just as hard as winning four regionals in North America. And I, was, I, I can't... I think for a team that's been put in this class with these other teams, I think that... I don't think they've been showing it. I think they're far more inconsistent. And I think they rely a lot on home runs, and they really struggle to hit the single. And, and, and sometimes you just need to hit the single, you know? For my non-baseball watchers, it means they take a ton of risks... And they don't, they sometimes will pass on the safe play to make the the big play and it kills them, right? It killed them against Vitality. It's killed them against other teams. So what do you need? Get on base. You just need to get up. Listen, we can't, you can recreate Yan in the aggregate, right? I mean, M80 actually tried to do that, but it didn't work. But anyway, you can. Like, if, if you have no idea what we're talking about, yeah. you should watch the movie Moneyball. Fantastic movie. One of the greatest sports movies of all time. Brad Pitt, bad person, apparently. But very good. Apparently. Um, allegedly, I should say. Anyway, uh, Furia, I love you. I love watching Peak Furia. They're you know, the most exciting team in the world to watch. So, for so what would you say is a 
on the performance for them. What I don't think they're going to make the top eight. Right. Okay. I, 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 I did a bracket. I do not have them in the top eight. I have Space Station instead of them in the top eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What about you? What about you? Hoodie. What about that? Because <laughs> we, we both have teams that are kind of like somewhere in the middle, yeah. right? Yep. I, I, yeah, most gotta, people would say Furia would be like a top eight, sure. Power on the verge of that. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is happening here, Hoodie? So I have, uh, well, first, I'm going to say what happened. So I read the who's got the best chance to underperform, not the smaller title of team you think will underperform. Um, so there's the lens, but I, I think it's, you know, it's fairly close. But what I'll say is uh, I select the BDS, and it's obviously not due to their performance. Like Michael said, they've gone back-to-back -back, um, regional champions. But I think that is why the chance for them to underperform is there. Uh, you have crazy high expectations. I think anything below top four at this land, people are yeah. going to be disappointed in BDS. And the reality is, look, we have talked about... Carmen Corp won three events, right? Falcons won three events. They went perfect. Furia and... Uh, it was Fury and, Fal uh, uh, Fury and Falcons went 3-0 through Swiss? No, Furia and Gentlemates. Furia and Gentlemates, 3-0 through Swiss. And so, you, you're, you know, they're, they're, whether it's through Swiss, their performance at the land or, you know, multiple regional victories in form going to it, we have seen you can expect excellence and perfection from a team like Carmen Corp. You can expect it from a Furia, but it doesn't matter. You just have to beat that team on the day. And BDS can lose to six, seven, eight, nine other teams that are at this event. And I'm not saying that I'm predicting them to, but when, them, when, when they walk into this event with two back-to-back -back victories in Europe and they've been playing very good Rocket League, hmm. the expectations have risen. You know, we, 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 want, we walked away from the last event and they were top eight. And I think even then we felt kind of like deflated, like, ah, man, they, sh they, they could have and maybe should have gone to at least top four. And so now, you know, what I'm saying is if they're not top four, I think it's for certain an underperformance yeah. coming on the back of two regional victories. Fair enough. Um, but for our residential fence sitter, it's quite a hot take. However, there is... <laughs> There is some historical precedent for this. Oh, yeah. Right? Team BDS well, have not a bombed guy out <laughs> of a major. <laughs> yeah. And it was in London, wasn't it? Right. 06. That is the thing about BDS. But, We've now seen it three times, mm -hmm. where kind of, or almost every time, because the major they won, they didn't win a regional. Right. And then they, you know, they had another, I think they won one regional in the winner split, got perfect swept out of the tournament by FaZe in top eight. And they win two regionals, go 06 out, win the world championship. Right after winning the world championship, yeah, miss yeah. two lands, yeah, yeah. then don't win a single uh, regional in the, and only make one final in Europe in the spring. Make two uh, world, land finals back to back. Completely remake their roster. Look on par with Carmen Court for most of the split, and just like a couple things here, a couple things there. Then losing the top eight. So you really, I think we've learned with Monkey Moon, the the online and the land have a ne almost yeah. no correlation. Yeah, it's just yeah. whatever happens. And, right? and you know, I just want to reiterate again, like not even. I mean, you, you guys have, and thank you, come to my rescue there, giving me a couple of anecdotes about BDS specifically, but I think we can zoom out even further. Like, it's just, cra it's a crazy game, and we've got eight or nine really high-level teams, and I, I love what you said earlier, Michael, is the ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. The ceiling of these teams, I think, is very similar for those top eight. Yeah. Now, are yeah. they all going to play at their ceiling? Probably not, but if the team that <laughs> BDS comes up against in the quarterfinals is at that ceiling then it's going to be a close series. Uh, so I think that is kind of the angle that I was looking at. It's like the expectations are so high that if they, you know, if they're not on their A game, they could be eliminated top eight. And uh, like I said, that would be a who, who, who has the best chance to underperform? Yeah. Like, like power, power underperforming is going to have, in my opinion, it's going to have to be 0 and 3. One three I think I 1 think. and 3, people are going to look and be like, uh, they could have done better, but yeah, whatever. I think I if guess, you so. look at the eight, there's eight teams that make the bracket and three teams that make round five. I feel like if power isn't one of those three teams, people are going to be like, OC sucks. We, we were lied to. Oh, right? Okay. I don't disagree, but I also think like there's a huge percentage of the community that just doesn't expect anything from OC. <laughs> even if they've gone I mean, six for six, even if they've been good, it, like if they go, I, I, I feel confident if chiefs go zero and three and power goes one and three, I don't think people are going to be, Super surprised. You're wrong. 
<laughs> I almost got in here, and I almost said power is gonna is gonna like have like a legendary like run, but Dude, I didn't. Look, I something like that would be awesome. It would be exactly legendary. Like my, my, all I'm trying to say maybe? is, and I'm not trying to down power. I'm just saying, when you look at what is expected from them, a one and three, two and three performance is probably in the realm of what we expect. A top eight is incredible. O and three is an underperformance. With BDS, yeah. anything, anything outside of top four is going to be. See, and that I is, disagree. That's kind of the angle that I was uh, coming at from this, because obviously BDS I, is, I mean, frankly, probably the favorite at this point. Yeah, Hootie, I, I, I don't disagree that you're, you're definitely right about the general public thinking that but right. to me i think if you make top eight i think it's a success i'm going to be honest because for bds the way that swiss is seated for bds it's like, nuts no but like what if bds here's the thing right bds could go 3-0 in swiss and play g2 who went 3-2 and weren't on their game like literally last like the literal last land then if, yeah. if they lose 4-3 to g2 and g2 wins the land then you're like, well, it wasn't a, a failure, right? It's like the the, the number itself, it's know. not as much of, of I don't of think a, they're gonna be I don't know. I know what they're you're saying, but I don't I know think what I you're agree. saying. Yeah. If if BDS go 3 0, then lose to the winner of the LAN in the quarterfinals. Okay, in but a that, really that, tough okay. series. Yeah, okay. If the, if it's the winner of the LAN and they play them in seven, sure. Yeah, because context matters. That's why Gen G was the second best team in, in COVID. They weren't, they weren't though. They weren't. They weren't. <laughs> Oh, and and, and, and I don't think people walked away from the land being like, all right, that was a great performance from Genji. Uh, I do, because I believe in my dog. <laughs> yeah, oh, but yeah. you, yes, when have you not Jack's said that? Thumb, Jack's thumb grip <laughs> fell off. Oh, <laughs> what won the land if Jack's but, thumb grip fell off? About power, if they go one and three, I would think that's that's underperforming. I yeah, think I they totally really agree. do need to make so there, a round there's, five. There's, one, there's only one result that's acceptable for power, and that's round five. No, it's top four, <laughs> which is going to happen. Anyway, that's, you know, I, I we really can fool think, around I mean, this a, all day. There's a very good chance that they run into like gladiators and and chiefs, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. power should beat those two teams, and then they oh. did already in round five. So anyway, let's move on. <laughs> okay, so speaking of gladiators and chiefs, <laughs> let's talk about the biggest uh, the the teams with the biggest uphill climb. Yeah, uh, which teams do you guys think are going to go o three? Just, just vacation time is what I like to call it because you show up, you twiddle your thumbs a little bit on a controller for like three hours, and then like you know off to Big Ben or whatever. The, the, the thing. I, so Udi, three, Udi. two, one. Mobula, Mobula and, gladiators. and gladiators. Now I want to say this, and how I mean, geez, both of them. So we got a two-thirds European team representing APAC, and we've got a. <laughs> Three thirds team representing SSA. Uh, We're EU haters. That's what we are. They, they, Five EU. Well, what I was going to say what is, I think these are going to be. These are not going to be as easy, and which sounds really rude. I don't, I don't mean it that way, but it's it's going to be tougher matchups for the squads that they come up against. But I do still think that they're probably the two weakest teams. Um, I, I see. You know, I, I, Chiefs. I think is is fair enough as well to, to throw down there in the 0-3, 1-3 and and expectation. Um, but Gladiators, it, look, I, I think if they had been what I thought they would be with those straight out of the gate, then maybe I wouldn't have put them in this 0-3, right. but there's a little bit of shakiness. It's up and down. And sure, right. they got a little bit better as the, as the uh, split went on, but I, I'm, I'm not totally sold yet. And I mean, I... I, I I don't like to go down this road of negativity, but I'm not going to lie. I just hope Mobula goes 0-3. Yeah. There is well, no other I expectations have, for them. I, I also have them, uh, Team Mobula 0-3 uh, because they are the uh, somewhere between the 42nd and 58th best European team in the world. I had this idea the other day. I would love your opinion on this. This is a bad idea for like actual competitive, but I think it would be kind of fun and a silly way to keep people from uh doing this import stuff or like playing from a different region i think they should be that if you um are not a resident like you're not living there for the entire split or you know you're a, you're a majority import team right such as team up and you qualify for the land you there should be a playoff between the t the region the team that was most likely like first off the land in the region you came from and you for that land spot. Because if you're going to steal the land spot, <laughs> so like should, so Luna, Galaxy. Luna Galaxy versus Team Mobula. And if Luna Galaxy wins, it. they go to land. 
I love that. Thoughts? I think that's a great idea. That yeah, is well, I promise wonderful. you, no one's going. I mean, maybe they'll go for the money. Maybe they'll go for the money. That that's a that's probably what they'll go for. But like, at least it'd be funny to watch them like be like, guys, we're gonna go to land, and then they have to play like peaking atomic, and they just get smoked. <laughs> anyway, not my point. That, that would uh, be actually, a fantastic deterrent. Yeah, it would be hilarious. Just that like would be a Spanish yeah. Civil War too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> VK Salem versus Atomic. What year is it for land? You know? <laughs> um, no, but. I'm going to put Chiefs here instead of Gladiators, and this is why. Uh, I think if Vert played in OCE, he would be, like, on a team that was, like, the step below power sort of level. Um, and I think if Tho played in in, uh, in in OCE, he'd be, like, the top five player. Um, so, to me, like, that team, to me, would pretty clearly yeah. be the second best team in OCE, and I think they will meet in, like, an 0-2 round. Um, and, or, sorry, yeah, in the, in the 0-3 round. O2 round? Whatever O2. one makes you go to O2. O2 yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think, because I think Gladiators will steal a game, and I think Chiefs will go O6. Uh, I think, you know, in that se- in that lower round one, they'll play like an O, like uh, Gladiators will play like an OG or a Twisted Mind, and they'll get like a, a Mickey game three or a Mickey game one. And then they'll be able to play an O6 Chiefs team. Um, and then I think the other O2 team that'll probably be one of those kind of, you know, second or third, fourth seeds will um smoke will smoke uh mobula very badly so yeah that's uh th- that's my reasoning yeah no i think then you're underrating chiefs but uh oce2 has given me no reason to believe i i think i'm i'm with yens but i think a lot of it stems from hopium cuz there's the uh storyline there i want to see them because if they it's two and three, right? If they go to the if they go to round five, they take the spot. Yeah. So I want to see them in the like I want to see them in round four. Okay, I see you. That's At least fair. just That's for the entertainment reason. purpose, you know. Yeah, totally. <laughs> no, I get that. It would be cool, but I'm I just I hadn't even thought of that. I'm just thinking about where we place the teams, and I I still think Chiefs is a more solid rounded team than a team with though who has yeah not been able to lift that team up to the heights that you'd expect gladiators to be at with a I mean, player of his caliber elevate well they also lost plenty yeah too, but they, okay they had much. a weird first regional and then they mostly dominated yeah okay hey hey also i tried to i tried to get us correct last time no it was don't peer happen. pressure me and i caved and well, look listen, at us we were wrong again yeah, gaiman gladiators <laughs> you guys should come on the show so that we start predicting them. But you didn't, they didn't come on the show, so. Yeah, that's true. All right, so we talked about the 0-3 teams. Let's see what everybody thinks, uh, who everybody thinks is going to go 3-0. Who has the hottest start, Michael? Let me take a guess. Tiger Nation, baby. Let me take no, a guess. NG right. Mobile <laughs> One Racing are going 3-0 and Team Falcons. Now, I did my predictions i did my little sheet i know my boy adam core or not really my boy but in my heart he is is like kind of retiring from the sheets or something after the end of the season so uh, i hope listen brother let's take a little moment thank you so much you've done so much yeah. for this community big shout out to adam uh, you've core. made for content creation for fan engagement you're a legend man i whatever mm-hmm. you do next i hope you you love it and i'm sure there'll be other people that'll take on that responsibility lovely thing about the rle sports community is that we we were there for each other mostly. Wait, um, let me get this right, Michael. You have Team Falcus and Gen G. So you have their oil and you have my oil. Mm-hmm. Call me George Bush, oh, baby. God. What an oil race. I did my prediction sheet and uh I did have I had Gen G going going 3 0, like un- unironically, like not as like a funny fan thing. And you know why I can prove to you that it wasn't a funny fan thing? Because I had them losing in the quarterfinals to BDS um so the thing about this sort of thing is this is my prediction okay gen g they beat secret like three one three two then they play furia so they get a double sam first two win beat furia and then they get g2 in the 2-0 rounds that's a free win and so we're now 3-0 we haven't played a european team yet we play a european team we lose it's the classic na tale um but anyway uh, then Team Falcons, uh, I think they will... Uh, they, listen, there's some demons to be exercised against Space Station Gaming for the Twins and TRK because they, all three of those players lost to SSG 
specifically that boy, L. Jesus. Uh, last season, he dominated uh, the Twins at the World Championship with like, like I think he put up like a 1.8 rating or something. Had like 12 or 13 goals in just five games. Just turned Rawas into a Swiss cheese in that goal line. He was just slotting everything. Um, so I, I think that if they if they can get that win and finally beat, uh, you know, the the seventh best player in North America, which is big for Mina, um, maybe they can, you know, I think they'll they'll carry that momentum into the 3-0 finish. I can see Team Falcons going 3-0. I even had them 3-0 in my sheet of the predictions, but I thought better of it. I definitely don't see Gen G doing it, though. I have Gentlemates coming in with all the confidence in the world, as they should, and G2 going 3-0. Mm. Those are the two teams that I believe right now have the best chance of just racing through Swiss. Because they're going to get some tough matchups uh, in maybe the second round. I believe uh, Team Falcons might have to beat BDS or something. Um, but we've seen BDS have slow starts before. It, it, it's just for gentle mates, this is where they need to show that it wasn't just Copenhagen breakfast. Uh, they can do it on a full English breakfast too. They, they're the, the ones who have such a, like we've said so many times before, such a team-based play style that shines on LAN. And this is where I think they need to show that once again. And then G2 is G2, don't you think, Hoodie? I do. I've got G2 as well, and I have BDS, our top two seeds. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to take care of business in round one versus BDS got Mobula, and G2 has the Gladiators. So I think those are two uh, fairly comfortable victories, which should, you know, in theory, give them the most uh, desirable seed moving into the next round as well. Um, and, and of course, we'll, we'll carry on as long as they continue winning and take care of business. I think BDS... You know, you're you're probably sitting there thinking, well, hold on, you're contradicting yourself. You just said they have the chance to underperform, and they do, if they find a, a team that is playing hot in the quarterfinals. Um, but yeah, I think those are the two teams that. I mean, it really just stems from I think that they will take care of business in the round one match, probably more comfortably than the rest of their peers, which, like I said, should should give them the ideal match moving forward. So. Um, and, and of course, I think those are two teams that are in form right now. So those are my yeah, uh, my my selections for the three and O prediction. But uh, one thing I wanted to say, we saw two teams that I mean, I would guess ten percent of the community had predicted to go three and O in the last major. So it, it's that, like yeah. uh, you know, it's 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 something that you have these expectations, you have these ideas, you have these thoughts about who's going to be in form, who's looked good recently, who should be the three and O teams. And it doesn't always work out like that. So yeah. And then Last. again, you know, more more evidence. Fury goes three and zero, and they, like Michael said earlier, they get molly whopped in the quarterfinals. The only quarterfinals that wasn't very close. So yeah. as soon as you think you know something, yeah, those quarterfinals can throw off the entirety of Swiss. It doesn't even matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. So La then... Last time we were on this, yeah, pre-major show. What did I say? Sneaky three zero for Fury. So listen. sneaky three zero. When I said there was a sneaky. Hey, dude, they were not. They were not sneaky. They were destroying everyone. <laughs> they were so good. This time, sneaky three zero for Tiger Nation. Baby. And then they lose okay. in the quarterfinals. Uh, okay. Yes, literally. I literally think that's what's going to happen. So oh. then, what do we think of those semifinals? Who is actually going to stand mm. the test and make it through those quarterfinals? Mm. Will we see EU dominate the playoffs again? I, got I say no. Two? So go ahead. I say no. And, you know, a lot of my stuff you, you guys have figured out is, a, is very heavily influenced by storylines. You know, what I hope You're to a happen. Y'all yeah, yeah, rewind. Y'all remember I was vouching for Team Rock. I'm vouching for mm -hmm. uh, the snowman. The snowman. I, the I want these snappers. fun storylines. That's what I live for. I think it's so much fun. And, and we did talk about this back then, but we, we, I was probably spoiled by such awesome stories with Liquid and. Queso and even Seiko and Zen. But 
I, I want to see it some more. That's so much fun to see new talent flourish or, or new scenarios happen. And that is what I've been pulling for for the longest time. I want to see an international land champion, not from Europe, not from North America. And I want to see a top four that has one EU, one NA, one Sam, and one Mina. Ooh. I want to see it right here in London. And I think, I think it's possible. We saw some I good mean, performances. And if there's one LAN, this might be the one. It could be the one. We saw some good performances from Falcons and Furia in the first event. I agree, Michael. They have been pretty silly lately. There's been some <clears throat> um, allegations about the silliness even. but um, That was so dumb. <laughs> that if you watch Furia... They they throw That's games what they and they do, have no man. idea they're throwing. That's them. what like, they do. Yeah, they play. It's like, come on, they, they play the way that you all play on your alt account. That's how they play. They, they, they have no <laughs> idea. Hey, I don't what play on alt account. They, <laughs> hey, they, I don't they, do that. they don't know that this is for money. Like if you watch them play, they have no idea. They think this is an in-game tournament. Like this is not serious. <laughs> so yeah, I'm but open. The, I'm open for the four region top four. It feels I'm, like I'm, it's I'm all lining lie. up for it. It is. It is hoping. And so I like I get it. But I've been hoping for it, and I'm going to keep hoping for it, and I'm going to keep predicting it because I want to see it. I think that would be such an exciting time for RL Esports. Yeah, it is exciting, and it feels like it's all lining up for it. Unfortunately, you're wrong. Mm. Right, Michael? Yeah, what do we have? have agreed. We're going to have two European teams in there, and then we have G2 and Falcons. Yeah. Okay. I'm not yeah. upset with that. That's two chances for Oxygen. 50% <laughs> chance. As opposed That's to right. my one. Spots, four teams. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I don't have oxygen in there. I can tell okay. you that one. That, that is, <laughs> that um, is going to be Gentlemates and BDS for me, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, my early prediction is BDS and Zen Esports will probably also be there because uh, he just finds his way into deep into these tournaments constantly. Yeah. So, um, But listen, where me and Jens agreed on... The, okay, uh, okay, okay. The, the the top four. We also agreed on the final, the matchup. We mm. did. And in fact, all three of us have one specific team in the at least in the final. Yeah. So why don't we reveal that team, and then we'll say where we have them. Three, two, one. It's Falcons. the team Falcons. Falcons. <laughs> nice guy, guys. Always on sync. But yeah, listen. I have this team as the runner-up. I know I said they were the team to beat, and I do believe they're the team to beat, but that means the team's got to beat them, right? That's what that means, um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I think that they're they're punching their ticket. Top two. Um, I think that, you know, TRK... Top two last time at the Copper Box. He's comfortable in this venue. And he's got two demon young players with him. So that's why I got them. Who's going top two, Hoodie? Oxygen, Who's baby. making it all the way? They're stealing Oxygen. the KC spot. They're going to the grand finals. Now, they will fall. See, this is the, the part that Michael and I differ. I've got Falcons taking the dub. I would love to see them kind of redeem themselves. Michael kind of outlined it earlier where... Um, Falcons got into the grand final in the in London in the Copper Box, and you know didn't do so well against uh, Moist. It was Moist at that time, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I think it is the redemption story. TRK, like you said, is back. He's got, uh, if I may, a couple upgraded pieces around him, and you may with that experience. I think this is going to be the time for them. They're going to take down Oxygen in the grand finals, but. We're all going to be celebrating over here in the OXG camp because we go to Worlds. Yeah. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Let's get Carmen Corp out of World Championship. Come on, guys. We can do it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know if we can, but we're going to try. I do have something in common with Michael as well, mm. and that is our Handsome, love. Smart. Our love for well the traveled. best team in North America. Listen. It's G two strides. <laughs> listen, listen. He did you know not. He did not me? want to do that. You know what they call me? What? Mister Fairness. That's what they call me in Richmond. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Do they? They call me. They say, Mister Fairness. You never let object. You never let your personal subjectivity get in the way of, course of not. objective issues. You know. And while Nothing. I have fought long and hard, that Tiger Nation. 
<laughs> are the true NA1 team. Right now, there's no question. How much, Michael? How much? And guess what? It all comes down to one thing. Four letters. M O No. -E. Oh my god. Mode. I'm going to buy you from the Discord. Oh. London mode. It is B mode. Listen. Beast the mode. Best or there, B mode. There are players in this Not game. Mode. There are players in this game. Only a few that have the genuine ability to be the best player, the driving force on a land winning team. Ugh. I would say there's only been maybe eight in the last three years that I would say have hit that level. Maybe yep. nine, right? You got your Zen, Monkey Moon, Seiko, um, Vatira, Atomic. I think even though he hasn't, I think First Killer has been one. I think TRK is another one. Mm -hmm. And Beast Mode is one of them, right? Yep. Yep. And while and and I think what what really helps G two now is last split it was kind of the Dan mode show, but this split, Atomic has completely come alive. Atomic looks phenomenal, um, and I feel like they have a similar to the Falcons. I feel like they're very similar. I feel like you have Atomic and and Kaleers as these very uh, brash sort of forward players. You have your kind of classic carry style second men midfielder type thing with beast mode and trk and you have your extremely mechy gifted counter-attack defensive minded third rawas and daniel i think that they're both very well rounded but i think one as we saw in uh gamers eight one of these players has just this special second gear the second mode if you would I that would can know. take his team and overachieve all the way to the win he said it after he lost the Copenhagen major, he said, this is the worst feeling in the world. Mm. And when Mo doesn't want to feel something again, he doesn't feel it. Ring it up for G2 stride. NA is so back. We're so back. <laughs> and G2 will win its second land of the open era, tying BDS and Vitality. I feel like these are the three true orcs of the open era. I think KC is getting there as well. But it'll be really fun to watch as these three sort of legendary esports orcs not compete for that prize of that third open era land after this one you know i had the exact same scenario as you just described but i saw that you had the same scenario that i had pulled out so i changed it up <laughs> <laughs> and i believe in the team falcons redemption because that's what it is making bro you are such a hater this is crazy making the grand finals <laughs> Two London lands in a row mm. and making it happen this time. Listen. Without without Ahmad, but making it happen. It when, would be so when... special. We've all been waiting for that Team Falcons win. And this, yeah. I feel like everything's yeah. lining up for. Not just the top four, not just the top two, but maybe even so question. a victory. Question. Hmm. If the Falcons make to the final and lose... Yeah. We're going to have to start calling him TRK naps because he can't get it done. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> just wanted to make that joke. I don't have any. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> oh, no, I'm kidding. Naps is actually one land. I, I actually so, so, don't know who would take it there for the story. I would love to see the redemption. So no from EU final. That's, I think, the big thing. Here, but that is, is that, I think, what we're both predicting here is, yeah. is that Because this never happened. It, yeah. Oh, that's y'all. That's y'all. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you, you, we're well, not. Me I'm, and Jens are predicting the first ever in RLCS history. That's not crazy. In like land history, it happened yeah. in DreamHack when the Peeps played G two. But it's pretty spicy. In, in history. That the is spicy. First RLCS no EU final. That yeah. would be awesome. It's very, very spicy. That would but not hey. be awesome. I would be devastated, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so just to uh, just to recap, because we kind of bounce all over the place. My top two is Oxygen and Falcons, with Falcons taking the dub. Yin's top two is G2 and Falcons. He's also got Falcons taking a dub. And then Michael has Falcons and G2, but he's got G2 taking the dub. So, um, a lot. I mean, I think it's pretty cool that all three of us have that much faith in Falcons. I think that is kind of oh, what Yin's is kind of alluding so to there, scary. where it, it feels so like it's lining scary. up. You know, it feels like uh, they've been leveling up, and, and maybe, just maybe, they have hit that, uh, that final gear that they need to, that final mode that they need to. But I want to talk we, about... We jinx them. We jinx them. They're going I want to talk oh, about geez. the <laughs> best over. player. Can okay. we all predict 
who will be the best player? Not the MVP, because that's always sure. going to be from the winning team. Uh, we're just talking about the best player in the tournament. Michael. There's only one answer for this until future notice. The best player in the world is Zen. There are players that on a day will perform better than them. I think Drali has been maybe the best player in Europe yeah. uh, over the good. split. But the problem is, is, is similar to with Justin, with Monkey Moon, with other players, these players come and go, right? They go up, they go down. They, they come up, they have a great while, then they kind of go down, then they come back up and they go back down. Um, I think about before the World Championship, 21-22, when everyone was like, who's the best player in the world? Vatira, TRK, or Yan? And then none of them won. And Monkey Moon dominated everyone for a week, right? Because he was the best player in the world. It's players that peak and value. And so it's Zen. Zen keeps proving us. We keep like jumping the shark on Zen not being the best player in the world. And then he shows up and he proves to us that he is still by far the best player in the world. Um, I expect at least one more legendary performance from him. I expect at least a couple really strong ones. And I think once again, he's going to, like he has all season, drag his team to a much better exit uh, placement than they should have because he covers up so many of their issues as a team and individual. It's Zen. It's always going to be Zen. Well, Michael, if they call you Mr. Fairness, they have to call me Mr. Rightfulness. <laughs> Mr. Im- impartiality. Okay. Mr. Rightfulness. <laughs> Because I've got beast mode. So you've been that hyping that up all split and against. you're just missing out on call, calling in the best <laughs> player at the LAN. Because he got, is I going got to mode step two. up. I got mode two. Who? Do, who? Mode. I, I don't know who that is. I'm talking about B mode. B mode. Beast the mode. The Bank of Montreal, dude? What is that? <laughs> that your uh, is that what you're calling? Lando, can we get some B mode branding up right here so everyone can see what Jens is talking about? I am um, talking please about. Please put it here. In is that post. actually you call it that, Michael? It is a massive multinational bank, the Montre- Bank of Montreal, BMO. They have that's, that's a London, a London name. office. There's that's a London a, office. They can go to the BMO in London and take a photo. That's a dope nickname for a bank. They Way should. too cool for a bank. There's a Mo museum in better. Düsseldorf that's called Het Jens Museum, which is very good. I, I have taken a selfie in front of that. <laughs> um, but I'm talking about the best player on G2 mm. and the best player in London will be beast mode because he's just been going off all splits and he's on a team that right now can make it happen. We're predicting him two out of three at least, right? Yeah. To make it to that grand final. If not the grand final, it's going to be a semi-final. G2 is just really strong and beast mode is the strongest player on that team right now. Yeah. Best player now. There you go. For sure. Odi. Hi, I have a TRK, and I think this is uh, obviously it lines up with my major winner as well. And I think, but the thing is, I think it, it it's just a, it's a full story because we think back to the third major last year. We have Rule One, the Twins. They went top four with an incredible performance. We think back to London in the past. TRK top two, an incredible performance. It's just been building and building. And y'all remember before the first major, I just felt, I, I said that I felt this Falcons team is, is finally, they're going to be the team. We've, we've, we've believed, we've held faith, we've said we think they can do it, they've gotten close, they're, 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 they were building consistency with um, you know, higher level performances and, and, and better results deeper into tournaments, and I think it is finally time. They have built a squad that truly can compete with the best in the world, and I think TRK is going to show and prove that he is the absolute GOAT from Mina in this event specifically. They're going to take home their first international win, and I am going to be um, thrilled because we finally have a champion that's not in a, an EU. Love it. Love it. Love it. So we got Zen, uh, Zen, Beast Mode, and TRK as our predictions for the top player at the Major. Why don't you guys drop your predictions down in the comments below. If you're watching on YouTube, let us know what you think. Uh, or who you think is going to be the best player at the event. All right. Thanks for watching this segment of Shiftcast. The other segments and the full episode are available on our YouTube channel, and you can listen to it on Spotify.